The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I was also to a little bit of a personal relationship the past couple of years. Around seven years ago, in the middle of our first fundraiser, I was on the boat. And I remember I was before the fundraiser, I was walking up the top of the boat, making sure everything was ready. And I get a call, 718 number, and it was Rabbi Wallerstein. He said, all right, Majeski, yeah, how are you? You have a few minutes? Meanwhile, I was like, people are coming. I'm not hanging up on this call. Yeah, sure. He's like, what are you doing Pesach? I said, uh, usually start the cleaning around Badikas Chametz time. My house, we're getting ready. <laughs> we got out of Pesach. We got a few months for that. So I want, want you to come run my, my teens program. We're having a Pesach run you, a program. I want, you, I want you to run my teens program. So I said, okay, Mertz Hashem, I'll do it. And you know, I mentioned to him, I'm, I'm starting to, to speak a little bit. I really enjoy giving over Torah. It would be, it would be so nice if while I'm there, there on the program, you can you know, give me a slot. I know I'm doing the teens, but... You know, if you can you know, throw me a bone, be a big crowd, I'll get my feet a little bit wet. Okay. Start handling the teens program with the, the one and only Miss Esti Zucherman. She saw what she could do. And the team got, I got to know the Arnava team. And I prepared to so say, he said, prepare something. You know, you're going you're gonna to speak and you're going to be on a panel. And I get to the program, and I really open it up for the first time. I think they sent me a bunch of emails, which I didn't look at. But I get there, and I see that the first spot, opening spot, Pesach night in shul, he gave me to speak. A no-name, a rookie. I thought I was going to speak like before the Nate's minion, you know? Like before Nate's 5.30, there's you know, the greatest, Charlie Harari, everyone's there. He gave me opening spot, hundreds of people. He introduced me. And the whole Shabbos, he's, the whole Yom is coming over to me. I remember that voice, Majeski, he killed it. <laughs> Walking by, every compliment he could get. He's telling other people, wasn't he amazing? I got a call on Pesach that a family member of mine is coming in the middle of Pesach, Chalamayr, to the program. She's a girl who's going through a very rough time. If you could please go over to her and look out for her. She can't know that you know. She's very uncomfortable, but find out who she is. And if you can make conversation with her, okay. I'm looking around. The first few days, I, she was not to be seen. Finally, on Yumtif, I found out she was still sitting with Rabbi Wallerstein and his family. I went over to her, I said, how are you? Mr. Majeski from L.A. She was looking down, no eye contact. She definitely didn't even feel like she had to dress like she was on some type of from Pesach program. She was sitting right there with the Wallace family. All his girls were talking to her, trying. I made a few minute conversation. And it happened to be a year later, Something came up. She was in Los Angeles. She called me up at the time. She came over to my house for a meal. And I started getting a little bit involved in, in her life and her journey, a tremendous, tremendous journey. This girl went through a lot. And we spoke a few times since then. So today, as I was trying to really, you, you can't, you can't, you can't encapsulate who he was, but trying to get an understanding. I figured I'm going to call her up because I never really found the full story, how she got there in the middle of Pesach and what was going on. So I called her up. And I said, how are you? Baruch Hashem, she's dating someone now. She's starting a new business next week. I said, you know, I'm speaking tonight on Reverend Wallerstein's life a little bit to try and touch, try and inspire do you mind going back to that time of when I first met you and you ended up on, on the program? Just tell me a little bit of your connection. And this is what she says. 
She says, I, I was feeling extremely empty in my life. I, I didn't know what to do. I knew I wanted to run away. I wanted to go somewhere. I didn't know where to go. I just knew I had to get out of my house. And I take a flight to Las Vegas. This is an 11th grader. So I'm staying in some apartment with two married couples. And my parents didn't know where I was. No one knew where I was. Besides for my sister who put a tracking thing on my phone. And she was able to track me. She found it exactly where I was and which location. She didn't know what to do. She called up Rabbi Wallerstein. Rabbi Wallerstein didn't know me from a hole in the wall. Never had one interaction with him in my life. This was in the middle of Pesach. Rabbi Wallerstein calls me up and says, what in the world are you doing in Vegas? I said, who are you? Zachary Wallerstein, what in the world are you doing in Vegas? Back to my question. He said, I don't know who you are. I'm like, she hangs up on him. He's got a, he doesn't take no hang-ups, calls her right back, says back and forth. He finally says, listen here, I am send, making you tickets. I'm sending you a flight right now. You're coming to my program in Arizona. You're spending the rest of Yom Tif with me. So I told him, you're crazy. I'm not going anywhere. I came to run away from everything. I'm not going to your program. No, he, was, he wasn't stopping. I had to ignore him. Finally, he calls back again. He says, listen here. If you don't come to this program right now, I'm calling the cops. You are with people who your family considers kidnapped you. It's going to be a tremendous balagan riot, whatever's going to go on over there. I'm calling the cops. We know exactly where you are. I said, were you scared? He's like, scared? She said, he called the cops. <laughs> I would be like, why call the cops? He called the cops. She said, I got on a flight so fast. I said, listen, I'm going to go there, make this rabbi happy, and come back. So I came to the Pesach program. So I didn't want to look at him. I forgot to talk to him. I didn't want to look at him. I was so angry at him. He ruined my whole plans. Because he gave me a room. I had my own room, hotel room. He says, finally, at the end, the last day of Yom Tov, he sits me down and he tells me about this ranch that he just started. He says, you have to go to the ranch. You have to go to the ranch. He has these horses there and his therapy. He spent so much money. He raised his own money. But he did to get this ranch started. I remember when he called me. He was so excited. I was in the mountains. You got to come see the ranch, Majeski. Let's go. You got to come see the ranch. I still never made it there. I just want to go horseback riding. One day. She says, I get to the ranch. It took me six months to finally get there. I finally got to the point where I knew I needed the help. I got to the ranch. She tells me, Rabbi, you don't know how bad I was. I got kicked out of the ranch. Do you know what it means to get kicked out of the ranch? This is the place of love where they take everyone. She said, I was such a troublemaker. She said, "I I was a leader. I would go ahead and I would... Tell the girls, you know, I'm going to steal some pills tonight. I want to get high. And I was a leader, so everyone would follow me. And I was ruining everything that they tried doing. So they kicked me out. And they sent me to a hospital. She said, I'm there for a week. And I had to get out of there. So I want to go back to the ranch. And the ranch said they couldn't. They weren't equipped. They weren't equipped to deal with me. So I called Rabbi Wallerstein. I said, okay, we're going to find somewhere else for you. She said, I knew of another rehab they wanted to go. Rabbi Wallerstein calls up the rehab. They found out what happened. They told me no. She said, I've been kicked out of a lot of places before in my life. She said, I never felt so dejected like that moment. I got kicked out of the ranch and now another rehab. A rehab wouldn't even take me in. So I called up Rabbi Wallerstein and she said, I remember telling him these words. Rabbi, if you don't get me into a place by tomorrow, I'm done. It's over. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to escape out of this place. I'm going back to my drugs. And, and I'm just going to end it all. I wrote down the exact words she said. So Rabbi Wallerstein tells me as follows. I'm going to get you into another place. 
and I'm not giving up on you because you're my child. And she tells me he said those words and I can't describe to you how it just went into my heart. So I knew, I knew he really meant it. And the next day he got me into a rehab in New Jersey. And that's when that's when my life turned around. So there's some ups and downs, some struggles since. So he's been there for me ever since. I met brought him all the guys I was dating. I call him before every yumtif. She said whenever I would call, he would say, I'm so excited to hear your voice, was his line. That's, you, know, you tell that to your child. So excited to hear your voice. But let me tell you what, what the most amazing part about this story is. I was about to hang up with her, and I said, can I ask you one question? She said, sure. I said, you know, you went to Vegas. You got a phone call. I said, who picked you up from the airport? Who picked you up from the airport when you landed in Arizona? She said, Rabbi Wallerstein. My friends, you have to understand, I was with him on that program. When you run a Pesach program, your head is, your head is somewhere else. Rabbi Wallerstein was running this massive program, and he built his own extra pool for extra tznias, and there were people talking to him. And he gets this phone call in the middle of Arizona. You know how many people he could have said, Chaim, can you go pick this girl up from the airport? She's coming in. You know how many drivers he had available to go ahead and send her an Uber? He went to pick her up. Because wouldn't you pick up your child from the airport? You don't send someone else to get your child. That's who he was. There's a big gap. Everybody said there's a big gap. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.